Hello and welcome. This is Bhaskar Napte from Pharma Growth Hub. And I am going to make a few videos on to the USP General Chapter 621 that is Chromatography. And this is the very first video as a part of the series of the video. Uh, so at the beginning, uh, let us understand, you know, three important points before we start discussing the the content of the general chapter 621 the first point is why adjustment in chromatography is required the second important point is how adjustment can be justified and the third point is some of the important considerations before we think of making an adjustment so let us begin our discussion with very first point why adjustment in chromatography because someone has validated the test procedure, submitted to the USP uh, to incorporate into the uh, USP, uh, US pharmacopoeia, which is completely validated, right? It is validated in another lab and it expected to be work good for the another labs too. Now this is the expectation, but does this expectation stands true? Let us try to answer these questions. The first point is to meet the system suitability criteria. I mean, as I said at the opening point that, you know, the method is validated in another labs, maybe with different systems. And it may be suitable for that set of analysis, but it may not be suitable for the laboratories with little different set of uh, instruments and the working procedures and for that reason you may fail in meeting the system suitability acceptance criteria mentioned into a monogram so this can become the number one reason for the adjustment the second could be to meet any other relevant performance characteristics like resolution retention time plate counts now as the systems that you are using may be different from the systems in which the method got validated. There can be chance that you may having a different resolution because your column manufacturer is different. Uh, your tubings of the spill system is different. And because of that, you may fail in getting the resolution. You may fail in getting the exact relative retention time. You may fail in getting the number of plate counts or the tailing which is expected to get achieved so this becomes the second reason <clears throat> why you have to think about an adjustment into a chromatographic conditions now having understood these two important points that why this change needs to be brought in let us principally understand why the SST or relevant performance characteristics mentioned in a monograph may not be achieved in your lab. And uh, these are the probable reasons for that. I think we talked about it a little. Let us discuss in a detail. The first point could be change in instrument or equipment. So the kind of HPLC or gas chromatography you are using may be different from the someone who has submitted this method to a US pharmacopoeia and then appear into a as a monograph. So change in instrument, there can be change in tubings as I said earlier. There can be change into the column extra volume, white volume, dual volume. And these changes can certainly bring a change into the system's performance which further lead to failure in meeting system suitability or critical performance characteristics the change in instrument and equipment is the number one point the second one is change in column manufacturer we all know that the column is the heart of an chromatographic system and the column manufacturer I mean, the performance of the column can get differ from one manufacturer to the another manufacturer. You will find hundreds of C18 column, right? 
from different manufacturers and believe they can have a different performance characteristics. I mean, one column manufacturer can have a plate count of 10,000 and the another manufacturer who claims this is the same stationary phase but still he will get only 5,000 plate counts. And, the, and this number can go for resolution, relative retention time, staling factor, etc. So change in column manufacturer becomes the another reason, you know, why you may not able to get system suitability or relevant performance characteristics as required into a monograph. The third point, change in reagents or chemicals. So this could be the another reason, you know, because chemical and reagent also brings the some of the very important characteristics of the chromatography. For example, retention time can get varied because of the reagent change. The baseline noise can be different because of the reagent change. And this can further lead uh, in not meeting system suitability or few of the relevant performance characteristic. Last but not the least, difference in operation. So how you prepare mobile phase? How you clean your HPLC system? How you operate uh, or manage your HPLC columns? Now these all factors can get impact. I mean this all factor can influence the system suitability requirement or the relevant performance characteristics. So the difference in operation from one lab to another lab can also become a reason why your SST or relevant performance characteristics are not achieved. Let us talk about the second important point. Once you understand that, why I must adjust the chromatographic conditions. But the second important point could be, or the next important point could be, how I can justify this adjustment. So justification needs to be given with the help of proving that yes now, whatever change I am proposing is justifiable because this change only make me to achieve the system suitability requirement and hence I need to verify the system suitability maybe given into a monograph like percent RSD for a replicate standard injections or a resolution between peak 1 and peak 2. I need to prove that look at the as per monograph condition I am not able to meet the percent RSD I am not able to meet the resolution and here are my proposed changes. The change in mobile phase composition, change in column, and when I bring those change in, now I am able to meet the percent RSD requirement. Now I am able to meet the resolution requirement given in a monograph. So this is going to help you in justifying the adjustment. And by verifying any another relevant performance characteristic, so system suitability has three or four parameters which can talk about percent RSD for replicate injections, resolution, maybe the tailing factor for the analyte, etc. But are these only the required characteristics? May not. There may be a necessity to have the required relative retention time to be met. There is a necessity to have the signal to noise ratio to be met for your sensitivity solution. So, or there can be any other another criteria which talks about how the chromatogram must be look. So, based on to this relevant characteristics, you can justify the kind of change that you are proposing. So, prove without change that uh, those relevant performance characteristics are not met. But when I bring those change as proposed by me, can bring this relevant performance characteristics and this becomes the solid justification for accepting the adjustment into a chromatographic condition. 
now before you bring those changes in and probably you know going to change your method of analysis let us also understand what important point you need to consider before implementation of those changes or the adjustment now changes other than those indicated in general chapter 621 require revalidation of the procedure so identify what are the changes that you can able to only make you cannot make any change into a chromatographic procedure which is outside 621 for example detection wavelength is not permitted to be changed so in case if you are proposing a change in detection wavelength then this is not going to be acceptable if you want to make the changes into a detection wavelength you have to again revalidate your test procedure and then only you can bring the change in detection wavelength into your testing procedure once adjusted procedure can't be readjusted without revalidation so during the assessment of your monograph method you identified that okay now the mobile phase needs to be adjusted for the percentage of organic solvent to achieve required resolution let us say of around 2.5 so you conducted verification and everything is done and in case in the future you found that no 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 it's not only about the organic solvent but i think i also need to change the ph of the mobile phase i also need to change the column temperature because the change in the ph and column temperature will further help me in achieving the another relevant characteristics now you cannot do this you can only make a change at the beginning before implementing the test procedure verify that and close in case in the future if you feel that now there are some another parameters needs to be adjusted or changed you can only bring the change in by revalidating the test procedure cumulative effect must be evaluated so understand that if you are trying to change multiple parameters parameters belongs to column parameters belongs to mobile phase parameters belongs to injection volume now this all parameters change can certainly contribute maybe negatively onto your relevant performance characteristics so understand the influence of the contributing change because of the cumulative effect that you are trying to bring in so these are the important points i thought of uh, you know discussing with you today and in the next upcoming videos we will talk about the actual adjustment into a chromatography the another important point i would like to discuss you discuss with you today is about the pharma growth hub platform the pharma growth hub is a platform which helps many pharmaceutical professionals in understanding a very complex topic into a very simple way in case if you want to get further updates about the the services of the pharma growth hub i have given a whatsapp link in a description below click on to the whatsapp group and join the pharma growth hub for the all information thank you so much